With all of the news surrounding Xbox and their exclusives lately, there seems to be a lot of panic within social media. Rightfully so, this does trigger some alarms for the Xbox ecosystem and the consumers within. There have been rumors circulating for days now claiming that Xbox is supposedly moving away from most of their exclusive library and making them accessible to other consoles such as PlayStation, for example. Xbox hasn't officially come out and confirmed any of this and it just seems to make these things worse as people are viewing that as a sign of these rumors being true. However, Phil Spencer did post a tweet saying that we would hear more information regarding Xbox next week. This is where people thought that would have been the perfect opportunity to dismiss these rumors and make an actual statement to disregard that. Plus, there is the terrible layoffs of around 1,900 employees within Bethesda, Activision, Blizzard, and much more. It's a very unfortunate thing for whatever industry, honestly. It just goes to show how wish-washy this industry can be, and I'll be breaking down both of these points so be sure to stick around so you're caught up with all the available information on these topics. So let's start off by talking about these recent Xbox rumors. I know a lot of this seems very grim for Xbox, but before I start getting into all of it, take all of this with a grain of salt. Now, some of this could be true, while most of it could also be false. We have no official statement regarding this actual information yet, because some of the rumors I've read are going as far as saying that Xbox is doing away with their console entirely, and they're just going to focus on making video games while leaving the console area of it all. Of course, it's the internet. This could be the minority of people in this entire engagement, but we don't really have enough information to base this off of anyway. I'm just explaining some wild accusations that I've seen this far. But personally, I think doing that now would be a very poor choice for Microsoft and Xbox. I obviously don't have to explain why, but I feel like that they're finally at a stage where they have firmly planted their own foothold and identity for themselves. They've been maintaining and improving Game Pass for so long, building off of what makes their service so great and creating value to their consumers, it really just wouldn't make sense. Even Jeff Grubb went on to Twitter to say that Microsoft has given up on the console war. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, Jeff Grubb is a very reliable person inside the video game industry. Jeff Grubb is also the person that claims that games like Gears of War is being planned to release on PlayStation, which, if that's the case, then what is stopping Xbox from putting their games like Halo, Starfield, Indie Indiana Jones, etc. to PlayStation. It could be a way for them to test the water to see if the demand for those types of exclusives will work, which I'm sure they will. A lot of their older exclusives did very well compared to their exclusives today anyway. But going back to the business model part of this entire situation, I think this kind of goes in line with what Phil Spencer has said for quite a while. He's always talking about how their goal is to try and get Game Pass on every device, mobile, PC, console, cloud, you name it. Xbox wants Game Pass on it. I just wonder if the business model change that Phil Spencer could be referring to is more in line with that. Maybe they want to focus on getting their service accessible everywhere. Allowing games like Gears of War is a step in the direction they want to go, but more so doubling down on that. And what I mean by that is pushing their games like this not only coincides with what they want, but allowing their games to be more accessible through e-stores and Game Pass, which in turn allows them to promote Game Pass. Because a solid trend that Xbox seems to be heading towards, especially in the last few years, is that they're all for gamers and being consumer friendly. I think a combination of realizing that the console war is out of reach for them, the push for Game Pass on every device, maybe even attempting to get on PlayStation has led them to this. I also think that the Xbox One era presentations before it released really hurt their reputation and they haven't really been able to recover since. When they talked about a lot of features they were focusing on with the Xbox One, the DRM, and making it an entertainment hub alienated a lot of their consumers. The Series X and S consoles have been great for this generation, but they probably feel like they're still fighting to stay afloat compared to PlayStation. I should also add, I don't mean stay afloat as in they don't have money. They do. It's freaking Microsoft. They are a multi-trillion dollar company. I just think with all of this going on, Xbox is looking at ways to succeed with their brand and I really don't think they're going anywhere. They're just going to try and do it their own way. People freaked out a lot when it was announced a lot of their exclusives would release with PC as well. But yes, this seems to be a bigger difference. But maybe this bold strategy will work for them. With all of this though, you can't help but think about how this will value future Xbox hardware if they do away with a lot of their exclusive titles. Many people will probably feel like their investments would be pointless in Xbox hardware, plus the digital libraries that Xbox users have would be useless if they moved over to PlayStation. There are a lot of factors to think of. I'm honestly super curious to see more from what Microsoft will tell us next week. For the people watching this video that own Xbox consoles, if you could get all Xbox games 
games on PlayStation, would you move over completely to PlayStation or stick with Xbox? Let me know in the comments down below. Now moving on to the next topic, this is the more negative part of what's going on with Microsoft and Xbox. Layoffs seem to be a very common thing in the video game industry and it's terrible to see. You hear these stories about how video game developers have to undergo crunch time to meet deadlines for video games, long hours, contract labor, all of that. Then you see how job security is never promised in this line of work. It truly isn't fair for the people that put in all of this effort for entertainment and then they're easily thrown away. The worst part about it is that these groups of people that were laid off were from previous acquisitions ranging from Bethesda, Activision, Blizzard, and more. 1900 people and families were impacted by this. When I heard news of this, I just have a tough time wrapping my head around this entire situation. Plus all of these rumors going around, the addition of that makes everything worse. It just makes me think, so you're buying all of these studios, these brands, these franchises. The employees obviously come with them. You're promoting trying to create a huge library of exclusive games. And I'll get to the exclusive library at the end of the video and how I think that this could age poorly for them. But then you just go and cut 1900 employees. I could be wrong, but I feel like this is a reoccurring problem with Xbox. They have so many great opportunities and they have all these great titles that they can use, but they focus more on contract labor. And what I mean by a reoccurring problem with Xbox is that every time they have something great, it always seems like they shoot themselves in the foot. Doing away with people that are more familiar with the work culture and environment to cut costs when you're a multi-trillion dollar company. Even Jason Schreier stated this on Twitter back in 2020. And I quote, at Microsoft, contractors can only work for 18 months max. They can then come back after a six month break. Microsoft uses so many contractors that this limit leads to a lot of attrition. And for games that take four plus years to make, like Halo Infinite, it has to be disruptive, end quote. So the full context of this is the video game industry as a whole has a contractor problem and not just Microsoft. But I'm focusing more on Microsoft and Xbox right now because they had a massive layoff. Working 18 months per contractor is terrible, especially when making a video game. It must be super stressful for everyone involved and it must be even worse when you know that you're either contract labor and you're going to leave in 18 months or if you're a full-time employee, not knowing if you're going to be one of the unlucky people in the next wave of layoffs. I'm just disappointed and sad for all people involved. People really don't credit game developers enough when they make something amazing, but they'll give blame more frequently when they make something they don't like. Criticism, of course, is one thing. I tried tying all of this with the layoffs, the rumors, the change in direction for Xbox, because a lot of it just makes no sense to me. I mean, what is going on with them? So Microsoft wants to buy Activision Blizzard, Bethesda, Playground Games, Obsidian, and many other studios because they want to build a stronger first party lineup for their games. And you know, that is completely understandable. I don't blame them. It's a part of the competition so they can compete with PlayStation. They even created a very great subscription service with Game Pass. You can cancel when you want. It has a great library of games. And truthfully, it just works well with the Xbox ecosystem. The part that confuses and frustrates me at the same time is how they're backpedaling pretty fast too. It's like they finally have their own identity with everything I listed coming off of a stronger console generation than their previous. And you're telling me they want to try something different? What was the point of all these acquisitions? All of these layoffs? How will Xbox still push their hardware if the games people can get will be on PlayStation? They'll probably just have them as timed exclusives on Xbox? I really don't know. And the more that I just think about it, it just confuses me and frustrates me more. I guess all we can do is just wait for an official statement from Xbox and I'll be very interested in seeing how they approach these rumors and honestly what the future will look like for Xbox because this seems like a huge business model change for them. And of course there's always the chance that we don't even have the full picture, just a lot of details are out of context, but that's something we're obviously going to see in the coming days in full light. That is going to be it for this video. There was a lot of rumors and speculation, definitely a lot of Xbox news. I'm also really curious to see what everyone's thoughts are regarding all of this information, so please put them down below. And if you haven't watched my previous video where I talk about Bethesda's identity, click here to watch it now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.